this keyboard had me spinning. <laughs> <laughs> that joke was completely worth it. I'm not taking back anything. Okay, so I have a bit of an interesting video today. Evermaker was kind enough to send over their CDV87 and some Wisteria switches for me to review. So this is the first keyboard video on a keyboard that I haven't actually bought myself. So I want to try and clear any potential confusion around this topic. I want to clarify that the most important thing I'd like to try and communicate are my honest thoughts. So to get everything out of the way, Epimaker has not sponsored this video, they won't get to see it early, and all my thoughts are my own. Of course, my biggest concern is coming across to you guys as being a shill or being disingenuous. So I really hope I'm clearing the air here. Sorry for the ramble, I'm sure most of you won't care, but I feel like it still needs to be said. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about this keyboard and the unboxing experience. So the Cedu V87 is an 80% or TKL custom mechanical keyboard. I'll get to the specs of it soon, but to start off with... Oh, God damn, this box is heavy. <laughs> there was some noticeable wear and tear around the edges of the box, despite how well it was packaged. And I also noticed it said V87 Pro, although I never saw the Pro terminology used again. Minimalistic design. Inheriting the originality style. This is exactly what I like, thank you. <laughs> well, obviously there were some translation issues, but as a foreign company, I can't really criticize them for it. For those of you who like a good unboxing experience, I think, like me, you'll be pleasantly surprised considering everything here was $150. Inside the box itself, we have the keyboard and two small boxes. The first contains a spare keycap and a braided USB-C cable, while the second contains an Allen key and a switch slash keycap puller. I will note too that the spare keycap you receive isn't color matched with the other two red keycaps that come with the keyboard. I find this to be pretty interesting as I would assume its inclusion was intended to swap out with the escape key. Well, anyway, it's just something to keep in mind. Now, with this keyboard in my hands, I can say it is one hefty boy. It comes in around 2 kilos, which is actually quite solid. Included in the box is this insane instruction booklet, probably filled with everything you need to know, but I'll leave that for now. Time for the keyboard specs. The Cedu V87 is a gasket mounted TKL with a compact layout. It uses a tri-mode PCB, allowing for a wired Bluetooth or 2.4 GHz connection. The USB receiver for the keyboard is hidden behind this little metal plate near the arrow keys, which honestly is an interesting way for the keyboard itself to hold the receiver, and something I haven't really seen with metal keyboards before. The modes on the PCB can be changed using this slider found near the USB-C port. The battery for the keyboard is a 3000 mAh battery, which I found to be the usual standard for larger keyboards, giving you approximately 50 to 60 continuous hours without the RGB, or 10 to 12 hours with the RGB. The keyboard case is a CNC'd aluminium, or aluminum for you Americans, with a cream powder coat finish that has a nice rough texture to it. It weighs 2.16 kilograms, which honestly is quite impressive. The compact layout of this keyboard allows for the inclusion of the metal rotary knob. Personally, I think this looks a little out of place to me, and comparing it with the c V75, you can see that the knob fits better without this metal square around it. However, besides aesthetics, I've been using it surprisingly more than I expected, as it's an easy alternative to changing the volume. And god damn guys, just look at how much this keyboard flexes. The keycaps that come with the board are a die sub PPT keycap. I find these to be in the same vein as XMI PPT or 21KB keycaps. They have a similar thickness to them, which I believe helps accentuate that deep, thocky sound that PBT plastic is known for. I will note too that these keycaps have a unique font stylization to them, and the inclusion of Mac shortcuts on the modifiers shows Epomaker also had Mac users in mind. According to the product specification on their website, the Cedu V87 houses a PC plate with flex cuts, south facing RGB only for real gamers, and god damn, look at all these foams. <laughs> we have PCB pour on foam, IXP switch sheet, bottom switch socket pour on foam, and pour on bottom foam. This is insane and is probably the reason why I think it sounds so good out of the box. 
but I'll let you be the judge of that. Hey, future editing Dylan here. Um, I feel like I forgot something. Oh yeah, right. Uh, the switches that come in the keyboard. Well, Epimaker's webpage on the Cedar V87 doesn't actually discuss them at all, so I'm only partially to blame. However, I did find them elsewhere. So they are a 60 gram linear switch with a POM stem and a nylon housing. They come factory lubed in the keyboard and are described to have a regular operating force with linear features. So I have to assume a four millimeter total travel distance as their own webpage doesn't actually have this information. Personally, with the exposure that I've had to them so far, they're good, but a little bit more information on them would have been great. Anyway, back to the video. Now, this wouldn't be a very interesting video if I left it at that. So, I'm gonna be ripping this bad boy apart, having a look at what's on the inside, and seeing what I can do when it comes to modding this thing. So while you're watching me open this keyboard, I thought I'd relay some of my thoughts at this time. The inclusion of an Allen key, I believe, is a great choice that many other keyboard designers and manufacturers can learn from. Yes, it's been seen more recently with Mode and the Arc 60 as examples, but often keyboards don't come with the tools necessary to open them, and for entry level boards, I think this should be the standard. Opening the case was a piece of cake, just six screws and boom. We're greeted with two kinds of foam already. The PCB is connected to two cables, one for the daughter board and another for the battery. However, once we detach those, we can remove the case and start working on the keycaps. This was easy enough with the included keycap puller, and if you look closely, you can already start to see the flex cuts on the PC plate. As I mentioned earlier, this keyboard is mounted via the plate, and with the inclusion of these poron foam strips, it really creates quite a flexible typing experience. Now, for one of the most tedious parts, removing all the switches. Well, luckily, this kit included this fancy little switch puller. How's that? With those out of the way, we can see the flex cut plate in all of its glory. So, as I mentioned before, the c V87 has a lot of foam. While foam can enhance the sound of a keyboard, the true test of a well-designed keyboard lies in how it sounds without any foam. Therefore, for this build, I will be removing all the foam, and I mean, just look at this. Half the weight of the keyboard is made up with foams. Okay, so now's probably a good time to mention that Epimaker also sent out a few packs of their Wisteria linear switches. They use a POM and PTFE stem in this nice pastel green with a PC and PA66 pastel purple housing. That's a lot of different plastics and I don't really know what they do. The switches however have an actuation force of 45 grams with a pre-travel of 2.2 and a total travel of 3.6. While slightly shorter than the standard 4mm of most switches, they still deliver that satisfying feel. It's worth noting too that these switches come in packs of 30 for only $10, which I think to be quite reasonable for a factory lube switch. Also, I won't sugarcoat it. Installing these switches in a PC plate filled with flex cuts without any foam support was hell. I mean, like seriously, this took me 30 minutes. I didn't even end up recording it because it was that frustrating. I will never, ever recommend doing it. Um, yeah, so anyway, that little breakdown aside, uh, finishing this build off, I'll be using GMK Striker 2 for a pop of colour, and because GMK keycaps tend to side with clicky rather than thocky sounds, I'm hoping that this will accentuate the foamless board. And if you thought the flex looked good with the foams, I'm pretty sure if I keep doing this, I'm going to break the PCP. Damn. <laughs> anyway, here's a sound test without the foams.
That was, um, that was horrible. I, I mean, seriously, just listen to how dead and hollow these modifiers sound. But I'm not done just yet. Let's see what adding some of the foams back into the keyboard does to change the sound profile. Well, uh, this is odd. Um, <laughs> welcome to Camping with Keebs. This is our premiere and also probably our finale. Um, I'm not going to be answering any questions. I just have really, really poor time management skills. So, um, let's talk about this keyboard. Hmm? I said I would be completely honest in this review and I plan on sticking with it. So, here we go. Um, I had a few takes on what I thought were positives and negatives about the keyboard, and I think it would be best if we split them into categories. So let's start with the negatives. Okay, the most important thing here being the design of the keyboard itself, right? So the c V87 is absolutely filled with foams, which is great. But remove all those foams and it sounds like a dead, hollow, pingy keyboard. Um, you know, it, it is difficult to fault Epimaker for this considering it's only $150 and it's it's almost within the expectations of what you sh you know you're expecting to get when you spend $150 on a keyboard but uh, I'm not going to lie it, it still is a little disappointing that we still to this day have keyboards that really only work when they're filled to the brim with foams. Secondly, I feel like a negative about this keyboard is the lack of customization uh, when it specifically comes to the PCB, right? So Epimaker has been doing so many great things when it comes to this keyboard, right? It's fully metal, check. It's wireless, check. It's hot swappable, check. But I'm stuck using a 6.25U spacebar and 1.25U modifiers on the bottom row. I'm sure um, this might seem like a lot to ask, but I just wish that Epimaker allowed some customization in this space as it gives users another reason to open up their, you know, open up their keyboard, test with it, experiment, and really bring that customization side into the keyboard hobby, right? Give people a reason to open their keyboards and mess around with it. And finally, while the keycaps are great for the value that they provide, I will mention that once again, the die sub job on these is pretty inconsistent and sloppy. You know, while die sub process is known to bleed ink, you can see here that the letters are both bloated and fuzzy. There's different consistencies across words and different font sizes between keycaps. Another classic problem that I've seen on my keyboard was that the letter T is separated from other characters, like there's an additional space between, between the keycaps, right? Look, I'm sure you can tell I'm being nitpicky here, but these are things you probably wouldn't notice unless you had the keyboard in person. So I feel like it's an obligation to let you guys know in case you want to buy this keyboard. Let's talk about the positives. Firstly, it's $150, right? I've personally bought XMI PBT keycaps for $100 themselves. And if you told me everything in this board was $50, I wouldn't believe you. No. The case in CNC aluminium, it has a powder coat finish and it comes in at over two kilograms. It has RGB if that's your thing, it's hot swappable, and it comes with three different forms of connectivity, being Bluetooth, wireless, and 2.4 gigahertz. It uses an actual mounting style as opposed to an incorporated plate, and the plate has flex cuts. Um, I don't think they're really necessary, but they're there. You're getting switches, which they could have easily sold separately for $60. You're getting a set of PPT keycaps that, while aren't great, provide that flocky experience that they're known for. So if that's your thing, why not? 
Um, it comes with a knob, which is actually really useful. And you're getting a keyboard filled with four different types of foam in an age where it's the standard to be sold separately for $15 extra. I haven't even mentioned the accessories either. You're getting a pretty useless keycap. That's fair. But a braided USB-C cable and a keycap slash switch puller? Why not, right? I think including the tools needed to open the keyboard should be the standard. But we both know plenty of keyboards that don't do this. So props to Epimaker. This is a real big positive in my books. And I personally wouldn't call this keyboard premium, but it pretty much surpasses every other keyboard in its price range. You know, thinking about companies like Razer or Keychron even, I mean like seriously, this is a fully metal keyboard for $150. Not even QWERTY keys can keep up with that. So what are my final thoughts? Well, for the price of $150, it's really hard to argue against the CDU V87. <laughs> it comes with everything you need right out of the box. It's already built, but at the same time, it does give you that option to customize it through the use of its keycaps, switches, and internals to match your preferences. Yeah, so, uh, Thanks for tuning in to uh, Camping with Keebs. <laughs> you know, I'd really love to hear your guys' thoughts on the keyboard, whether you agree, whether you disagree, whether it's something you think you would buy or it's something you've already bought and whether you agree with my opinion here. But no, um, thanks to Epimaker for sending it out. I really appreciate you guys watching and have a good one. I got to get back to camping. Camping.